Welcome again, everybody, to this uh, uh, fourth uh, webinar um, that we are organized as part of the <clears throat> uh, youth and young professional capacity building uh, program uh, in the lead up to the uh, World Forestry Congress. Um, once again, my name is Pier Andrea Pirani, and I'm uh, working, I'm collaborating with the uh, World Forestry Congress Secretariat. I'm based uh, in uh, Kota Kinabalu, Malaysia, and I'm uh, um, coasting. The meeting today together with Amos uh, and you'll hear some uh, Alina that you see on the screen. Uh, we'll have some more people uh, coming in uh, and uh, we have, yeah, well, yeah. I, I what I said, quite an interesting program, I think. Please keep your microphone muted. Uh, I'm hearing some, uh, some, some uh, um, background noise. Um, and again, otherwise Francesca will mute you. All right, so uh, a reminder again, please keep your microphone muted and please do engage with the program that we've got today, uh, that we've worked, uh, we've prepared for you and for all of us today. Um, if you would like to follow the meeting in French or Spanish, uh, you know that uh, interpretation is available. You have an interpretation button at the bottom of the Zoom screen and you can choose the channel that you would like to follow the meeting in. Or otherwise, you can um, keep interpretation off uh, if you are comfortable in any language that might be spoken, in any of the three languages that might be spoken uh, today. So uh, uh, let's warm up a bit. We have already started to introduce each other and to know wh who you are and, and what you do. Uh, but uh, we would like to do what is called a med tea party. Uh, and if you were with us in previous webinars, uh, we did something similar in, uh, I think, October, in the October webinar. Um, and so you know what it's, how, it's work, how it works. But if you were not with us, don't worry. This is the process. So you'll see a series uh, of open-ended sentences uh, on the screen, and you'll see them one by one. And the way it works is uh, we would like you to complete these sentences uh, with a short phrase in the chat box. So let, this is a quick uh, uh, fire question exercise, if you will. So don't overthink your answer, just type the first thing that comes to my mind. As you'll, as you'll see that some questions are really you know, straightforward, you don't even need to think about them. Um, and remember that in the chat, uh, typos do not count, right? So uh, for this exercise, but also throughout the webinar, typos do not count when you type in the chat. And let's have some fun. All right, so if everybody's ready, uh, let's get started. And so let's get the chat busy. My name is. So let's see, let's, that's the way to, in, to start introducing each other. So uh, my name is, uh, please type in the chat. Yeah, Usmane, fantastic. We want to see about 25, 30 chats. Alina, yeah, thanks. Uh, Leila, thanks for joining us, Leila. Uh, Rio. Or Riyadh, Rio, fantastic, Maria Paula, Sambat. All right, what else do we have? Antidius, yeah, we've heard from you. Thanks, Antidius. More, Ansu, Teresa. All right, Katie. Yeah, Nicolas, welcome, everybody. And if you just have, have just joined us, this is a med tea party that we're doing. And uh, yeah, please write your name in the chat. My name is Bala. All right. Okay, let's go next to the second one. And uh, I live in, I live in Kota Kinabalu, Malaysia, as I said, and I cannot type and talk. So I'll just be reading your chat. We have Peru, Rome, Mexico, New Delhi, Nigeria, Philippines, Spain, Lebanon. Okay, I cannot keep up now with all the chats. Vancouver, wow, that must be early also there. Nepal, Kampala, Peru. Uh, so it looks really that, like we've got uh, a, a very a global audience uh, from the Philippines and Malaysia here up to uh, US, Arizona, uh, Peru, um, and Vancouver. We got Ghana. Fantastic. All right. Tanzania and, Polo and Poland. Yeah. Chile. All right. Let's keep going. Next one is uh, I work as or I study. So what it is that you do? at the moment. Uh, we know that some of you might be students, some of you are, uh, are working. So what is, uh, what is it you do? Director of Innovation, all right. Thanks, 
Jose. It would be nice to know in which organization also, policy analyst. Uh, we got young scholar, young professional. Laila, you study forestry. Good to see you again, Laila. Some, we got some teachers, public sector uh, of agriculture and forestry from Angela. Uh, we got Antidus, uh, work as uh, Clarence. Sorry, I cannot keep up with the chats, but that's how it should be. That I cannot keep up because the chat is getting very, very busy. We have someone studying a public law, there's a forest sector. We have um, eco hydrologist and nature based solutions expert. Um, yeah, students here as well. Nicholas is studying a master's in forest sciences, focusing on bioeconomy policy. There is, yeah, keep them coming. Uh, CEO of DB Connect from Denise. Fantastic. We want to hear more about that, I guess. Uh, Maria Paula, program lead, natural solution based. All right, fantastic. That's quite a rich group, it looks to me. And thanks, Amos, for coming uh, to my to, to my rescue uh, for and, and reading through some of the chats. Uh, would you like to take the next one, Amos? Maybe I flip to the next slide, uh, and uh, and then you'll start reading, and then I'll read some more. Is yeah, that sure. all right? Yeah. Sure. So. Yeah, so the next one is um, what I love most about my work or studies. I know there is definitely something we all love about our work and study. If we could just put them there in the chat, that would be so great. Um, conservation work and soil, that's um, from Sambat. Um, there's youth engagement from Clarence. Um, Otuo Achampong, sharing knowledge. Um, keep them coming. Um, what do you love most? Um, ecosystem restoration, quite a great one there. Um, um, field these, trips, field trips, forest reserves. I, I guess many people love field trips, empowering the youth about forest and conservation, working with people from different sectors. That's a nice one. Um, nature, beauty, everything, climate change from Musa, agroforestry and urban forestry. Um, Alina says youth engagement, meeting new people, sharing knowledge. Um, uh, and it's good to see, I, I'm, I, I love to see that Laila loves everything about what she does. So we definitely want to know more about that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm jealous, I guess. Uh, all right, maybe we move on to the next one, Amos, quickly. What do you think? Yeah, we yeah, can sure. get a few uh, more. Yeah, we, let's, let's move to the next one. Thank yeah, you. so the next one is... Uh, over to the you, Amos. Forest. The forest or environmental topic issue that concerns me the most is, so what concerns you most particularly about the forest or the environment? Um, if you would like to share, please drop it in the chat. It's, it's, it's good to know that we have lots of similar interests here and um, yeah, illegal, illegal land speculations, um, forest entrepreneurship from Jose Carlos, uh, green spaces restoration from O'Toole, Isabella says climate change, um, uh, illegal logging and deforestation is there. We also have these uh, degradation and, uh, re and reduction, development of, um, Angela says, uh, development of red projects in the Amazon. That's quite interesting. Um, Antidious restoration and, uh, oh, I, I, I didn't get that right, but yeah. Um, I see Usmane in French, uh, again, degradation of forest uh, in, in the Sahel region, especially. Uh, and please, uh, I didn't say it before, but if you feel comfortable writing in French, do write in French or in Spanish in the language that you, that you prefer. Enhancing biodiversity. Uh, what, what, what impresses me is there's, there's so much similarities in interests and things that concern us the most. Um, we definitely well, I have, think. Uh, a common the, the, area of argument here. Indeed, I think there is a lot of things that connect us all in, in this group. Yeah. yeah all right. Let's, let's move on to the next one. Yes, Amos, right? So, uh, yeah, why don't you take this one as well? Yeah, so, where, yeah, I saw the announcement of today's webinar. Where did you see the announcement? Um, there's so many communication channels that we try to get also the announcement through. There was one on LinkedIn and Twitter via email. Thank you so much. Um, LinkedIn, um, there was a referral from Alina, the email um, by Twitter. I think referral is also very important. You can keep referring to your friends. Um, you can send some of these opportunities to your friends and so that they learn about these. Um, yeah, Maria Paula says from Amos, yeah. Um, <laughs> 
from email. There's quite a lot of it from the emails and the Facebook and, uh, and the Twitter as well um, from Nicolas. And that's very good to know. Um, we also now know kind of have an overview of what communication channels actually work to reach young people. That's very important. And it's good to know that there is a variety also here so that, yeah, yeah um, people get got to know about this from various different places or different people like yourself and Alina indeed. Uh, shall, we move, shall we move on to the next one? We've got two more for this uh, um, networking and warm up exercise. So uh, I join this webinar because, why did you join today? Expectations, objectives, would be good to know. Is there some, something specific that you, for which you join? Yeah, set expectations, fantastic. Yeah, connecting, collaborate with you all. Yeah. In oh, be able to give opinion to from the global theory. south. Um, to share. Yes. Yeah, this we'll hear from Otuo. Eh? We'll hear from Otuo later on today. Networking, yes, that's one of the objectives and one of the reasons why we're doing this, right? Um, uh, Usman again in French, uh, if my French is uh, 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 just good enough to share experience with others. And uh, I'm not sure what Aquate Morisot, uh, but I think probably enrich my network. That's what I would interpret it. But if I'm wrong, please correct me. Again, share experience, learn more about the youth role in WFC. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, shall we take the next last one? Very last one, Amos. What do you think? And then we move yes, on. Let's go for the next one, the last one. All right. So now networking. Yeah, you mentioned it. M many of you, many of us mentioned networking. So today uh, would be great to get to know someone here that. So, you know, are you looking to network specifically or to get to know somebody in particular, somebody that? know um, somebody that, you know, and then it's up to you how you want to fill in the gaps or complete the sentence. So we're looking at specifically the networking aspect here, I guess, and the connection. Yeah, all right. So you see something very immediately, very concrete from Antidius, uh, work collaborative to restore, pro, uh, protect forest ecosystems. Oh, uh -huh. Alina also puts it there. I would love to take part if there is anyone who would love to take part in the World Food Forum to find sustainable solutions for agroforestry. That's from Alina. Um, Denise is hoping to find someone who is keen to share their experiences. Um, Sambat is also eager to find someone to, who works in the field of conservation. Um, Ritika says that someone who is planning to attend the WFC and other youth, youth forest counterparts. Um, Riyad says, who is uh, working in sustainable agriculture. We have lots of those people here. And you might also want to get in touch with Alina, who is working with the World Food Forum as well. Um, yes, I think you can also um, yeah, follow the chat and know where the matching interests are. Musa says, someone in climate change and urban forestry who will hear um, very soon from Otu as well. Um, who, who might, who has an interest that crosses that, that line as well. Um, we have yeah. um, ecosystem service evaluation. Yeah, there is a lot of them. Yeah, so please uh, see, you know, if you can, if there is any matchmaking that can be done based on what you can offer and what is the demand from the other attendees uh, in the room here today. All right, this is, this is great. So I'm really happy to, um, to hear all this or to read all these different chats and to, uh, to, got to, to get to know you better, a bit better for what is possible through, through a Zoom meeting. Uh, but again, to give also, to, to see that there are opportunities to link up and connect. Uh, let's move on quickly to our plan for today. Uh, we are running a few minutes late. We started a few minutes late, but let's see, let's, we'll try to catch up uh, as we go along, um, we after after this overview, we'll uh, um, we'll have some some welcome remarks. 
after and after that we'll go straight into the first part of the webinar which is about the blogging competition which is ongoing the wfc blog competition which is ongoing so we'll talk about the process and we'll get we'll have a special guest which will give us uh, some uh, uh, tips and advice on how to write good compelling blog posts and we'll also take a few minutes to see what other upcoming opportunities or updates there are around the Congress and in the countdown that the Congress is about 54 days away. Um, so yeah, let, we'll, we'll talk about, about that. And after that, Amos, what do we have? We have a chat show after the Congress countdown. Um, we have a chat show with, um, we, we also have two youth champions that we are hosting today to share their stories. Um, and then uh, after that, we can also have questions from you um, to also submit to this panel that we will have. And then uh, we will come to the very closing of, of this uh, youth webinar. Yes, um, thank you so much everyone for joining us today. Um, now I have the pleasure to invite uh, with us here to give um, welcome remarks, um, Mr. Peter Choker who is the Associate Secretary General of the World Forestry Congress. Um, Mr. Peter has attended all the youth um, webinars that we have organized for all of you, for those of you who have followed the youth webinars, you, you might have always noticed that he, he has been present in all of these and even the regional consultations that we organized. This, this is a reflection of how interested um, the World Forestry Congress is in um, having youth engagement at the core of its operation. Um, welcome, Peter, I will hand it over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Amos, and uh, dear friends, welcome to this uh, seminar or webinar, rather this is great to have uh, that many of you here. I think no uh, coming introduction is needed because you are well into the program already with the discussions. And as Amos mentioned that I attended all the previous events, the risk is increasing that in these introductions, I'm repeating myself. Uh, that was all seeing always the same. So I tried to innovate again. And then you had me uh, in that big time because first, uh, Ritika, I hope that you will meet lots of people, pretty much everybody on this call during the World Forest Congress as well. And then I will tell you in a moment why this is not just uh, a simple wish, but it's, it's very close to being reality. And then the other thing that I was very much uh, impressed by, I think Isabella de la Paz said that, that she joined this event to set expectations for WFC. And it's great. This is the right spirit, guys. This is why you should come and really you should set expectations and you should push everybody to help meet those expectations. That's what your main job as youth uh, should be here. Why I said that uh, there's a fair chance that you will meet everybody in the Congress because A, I wish that all of you guys will be there in person. But you might have heard that Korea decided to uh, proceed amidst the, the, the current still not totally receiving COVID pandemic with a, a combination of, of uh, physical and hybrid uh, uh, solutions for the Congress. So we will be having uh, five big events uh, which will be totally physical, meaning that uh, it will be certainly a web stream, but the expectation is that all the speakers and the audience will be attending this in person that applies to the opening and the closing, uh, the high level dialogue, and we have two um, Mr. Roundtables on the plan. We expect these being uh, really physical, everybody speakers and audience, as I said, uh, being there present. But for the rest, we would like to provide a hybrid option, meaning that we would like to welcome as many any uh, colleagues from around the world as possible in the meeting rooms, but we will provide this hybrid meaning it's not only a static web stream, but it's a two-way communication with the virtual audience and the physical audience and the speakers in the room. That certainly is a challenge, especially when you have six or eight sessions running parallel. So that is something that we are very much looking forward to and uh, we quite a bit uh, excited about it, but we will try and we hope that this will work. I'm happy to see that somebody is already well into the night uh, in the east part of the globe and I see some guys from Vancouver, Flagstaff and places like that quite early in the morning. This is something that you will be able to exercise during the Congress as well because this 
hybrid setup means that it should be run according to the Korean clock. And I have to tell you that, uh, yeah, at 10 o'clock uh, in the morning in Korea is not necessary on your side if you are in Africa or Europe. Uh, it's pretty good for Vancouver, by the way, but then in the afternoon, that will be the other way around. So there will be a little bit of stretch and, 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 and commitment needed to, to enjoy this throughout the week. But we hope that uh, what will be said and heard there will justify this couple of sleepless uh, nights. And then, uh, and then uh, there's a famous movie, The Sleepless Nights in Seattle. So that could apply to all the sessions in the world for a small I guess. So I wish, I wish yes, Ritika, that you see everybody there. And I hope to see also everybody there. And uh, I think the program for today is just great. So back to you, uh, Amos and uh, Pierre Andrea, because there's a lot of interesting things to throw at the table. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you very much, Peter, um, for those for those remarks. And uh, yeah, um, to everyone attending with us today here. Um, now, following those remarks, I hope that in one way or the other, we can all be able to participate in the actual World Forestry Congress. Um, starting off with uh, some of um, also the more substantial parts of um, this webinar, um, just um, to highlight the objectives, um, and we also earlier on said that you can highlight what you expect of this webinar, and we already have some of them covered in these objectives. Um, through and after, at the end of this, through this webinar, we hope to prom promote the, the World Forestry Congress um, blog competition that you might have seen and to share some tips and guidance on writing good blogs. Um, blog, I, I see it as leaving a footprint on the internet for forests that you will be remembered for. So I totally encourage you to pay keen attention to these. Um, we also hope to, uh, we will highlight rather inspiring youth innovations in, in sustaining forests and forest ecosystems and com communities and announce the World Forestry Congress Youth Change Maker winners you might have followed this, um, this competition very closely also on the World Forest to Congress um, communication platforms. Now we have the results here. Hopefully once we announce the winners, you will also be inspired to be a winner with the World Forest to Congress blog competition. Um, we will provide an update on other upcoming opportunities in, in the countdown to the Congress. Um, a number of young people have been reaching out, a number of you also asking what kind of opportunities they can take up and how they can engage. Besides those that we have rolled out, um, you will have an update on what, where you can engage. Uh, we hope to, through this, expand on the World Forestry Congress audience and promote the Congress, the role of the Congress in addressing how to build a green, healthy and resilient future with forests. Um, we already see a number of people in the audience with matching interests and people who want to find something in other people that might be of interest to, to them. Um, I, after this, um, I'm hopeful that you will um, be part of this community and continue um, to exchange with us and then offer networking opportunities for participants. We already started this on a very high note um, with the Mad Tea Party. And uh, yeah, um, those are the objectives for um, this session, this webinar. And thank you very much. I will hand you over back to um, Pierre Andrea. Thanks, Samos, and thanks very much, Peter. So I think we already had one of the announcements uh, or uh, um, updates uh, around the fact that the Congress there will be the possibility for uh, some. Uh, there is a, there is going to be a virtual element on on it. Uh, but yeah, we've got much more in the program for you today, and we're already running well behind time. So let's move on to the next segment, where we'll be talking about the uh, blog competition, the World Forestry Congress blog competition. I have just a few slides on process and logistics, uh, so to make sure that everybody knows what it is about and what, uh, uh, how you can participate. Um, and then we'll go to our guest, uh, uh, the first guest speaker for the session. So, um, you might have seen the announcement that was made already in February about the, the Congress, the, the competition. The second update of the day 
is that we've got the deadline for the block competition has been extended. So we are now working the new deadline. It's uh, uh, 20 of March. And Amos, please, uh, let's make sure that we have the link in the chat uh, with the information on where to find uh, all the, the call um, and, and the term of reference uh, uh, to participate. But so that means that there are about, I think, 11 more days uh, to go. Uh, to submit your blog for the competition if you have not already done so. Um, and uh, uh, sorry, some animation. So uh, do you have a story to share about building a green, healthy and resi resilient future with forest? And do you have an interest in boosting awareness, engagement, and investment in forestry? If the answer is yes, then you definitely have to participate in the competition. Uh, everybody can participate. So this is not a youth-only uh, um, competition. It's open to everybody. So please uh, also forward the, the call and help us disseminate the competition to colleagues and friends uh, that might be interested in, uh, in this and are not here with us today. Everybody can participate. So let's say that you are a student and you have a project uh, that you would like to, to describe uh, or a field experience. Or maybe uh, we've got probably some researchers here and you might want to blog about your uh, findings, uh, research findings. Or perhaps uh, I think we've got some practitioners and uh, entrepreneurs in the room with us today. Uh, maybe you want to, you would like to write a story about how you have been translating research into practice. Um, or maybe you are a policymaker or an, part of an advocacy group uh, and uh, you would like to showcase projects that have been implemented. Or maybe you don't fit in any of these uh, uh, examples, but still you have a story to tell us. And so we look forward to, to read it. How does it work? Uh, I guess it's quite straightforward. So we're asking, the competition is asking for a, a blog post, a contribution between five and 800 words. And you can write it in the language of your choice, being it English, French, or Spanish. Um, so write in the language that you're most comfortable with. Uh, and so as you see, it's quite open. We don't have a fixed format beside the length uh, of, the, uh, of the piece uh, and, uh, and uh, also the, the type of stories that we are uh, looking for uh, might be very diverse, as long as they answer some, of, some or all of these questions. So I'm going to read them out uh, for our interpreters to in translate them into Spanish and French. So from your experience in environment and sustainable development, what do you think should be done to build a green, healthy and resilient future with forests? What challenges should be addressed with priority? And what are some of the solutions and approaches that work? And finally, what actions should be taken that can lead to positive and transformative change? So these are the leading, the guiding questions around which you should build your blog post. And uh, uh, once we receive the post, uh, we scan them for um, uh, uh, eligibility. So we, need, we make sure that the, the posts do answer those questions. And then all eligible entries are published on the World Forest Voices blog, which is the blog that we use to, to bring together blogs, videos, and online dialogue around the Congress. Quickly around the selection process, uh, we've got a two-level selection process. So the first one is based on uh, readers' appreciation. Uh, so number of likes, comments, views, uh, uh, and out of these, uh, the first, uh, the, the, the ones that receive more of the likes, comments, and views will be shortlisted as finalists. So that means that it's also up to you to promote your blog. Uh, if, uh, um, you know, to, to yeah, it, we, we want the, the, the secretariat won't do any promotion besides publishing the blog. It's up to you to promote it uh, through your social media channels uh, or through your networks. And then we'll have a second level of judgment, uh, which is going to be, uh, uh, we'll have a juror, a panel of jurors, which will uh, uh, select uh, or will score the finalists around this, ten, this uh, uh, judging criteria. 
I see that Amos has unmuted. Do you want to come in, Amos? Yeah, I was I was just about to say that it's it's also worth mentioning that once we have published the the, the blogs on on the blog post, um, we will reach out to you with an email and the link to your blog, um, yeah. your blog post, so that you can promote it. So you know where it will be and yeah, and the link to use to promote it. All right. So finally, again about the, uh, about the prices and all this information is available in the link that Amos had shared previously or from that link. Um, so the top 10 finalists uh, will receive a frame certificate from the WFC secretariat and the blog post will be showcased through the various channels, the Congress channels. And for the three winners, uh, we'll have a trip to Seoul um, to participate in the Congress, but also in the pre, we'll have a pre Congress digital media workshop on site and uh, we'll be part, uh, we'll be putting together a team of social reporters that will contribute to the documentation and the outreach and engagement on uh, um, the social media engagement around the event. Of course, we know that, you know, traveling is not that easy these days. So uh, in case travel is not possible, there is going to be um, um, the winner will be invited still to be part of the social reporting team in a different format, and there will be a tablet uh, in case, again, travel is not possible. All right, we're not taking questions at this point, but please, if there is any, feel free to please add them in the chat and we'll address them throughout the webinar or as in a follow-up. So if there is any question on the process, the logistics uh, and the competition in general, do let us know in the chat and we'll make sure we address them. Uh, but uh, uh, I would like to move on to the next bit. Huh? And because what we talk about is just, again, logistic and process. Now, let's go into the what and, and how to do it. How do we write? How can we write a good blog post, blog post that beg to be read? Uh, and I'm very happy uh, that we've got here with us Nyasha. And Nyasha, can you start, turn the camera on? I see you coming in. I hope before, I hope you're still connected. Um, I cannot see you at the moment. Would you like to unmute yourself, Nyasha? I'm here, yes. Hello, Nyasha. Hello, good Hi. afternoon. Uh, so Nyasha, Nyasha Muzando. Nyasha is a strategic communication and knowledge management specialist. Um, uh, well, I've got something written down, but let me just go off the top of my end. Nyasha is great. Uh, I've been doing uh, some work with her on and off for the past eight years. And uh, I've always learned from her, I always enjoyed working with her. She's, she's brilliant. She knows a lot about communication, about social media, about blogging. She's been doing a lot of trainings and yeah, um, I reached out to her and I'm really glad that she was available and she could join us today. Nyasha, thanks very much uh, for being here with us. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now because uh, uh, your camera is better than uh, the blur picture that I put on here. So let me stop sharing my screen and uh, maybe we uh, spotlight you and uh, uh, we get started uh, with uh, some conversation. So we're a bit behind again, but I'd like, I really hope that we can, uh, um, uh, well, I guess pick your brain and your experience and uh, uh, provide our colleagues here and our participants with some, some good uh, um, guidance and tips. But let's start from the beginning. So uh, how, uh, can, can you tell us when did you start blogging? How did, what was your experience? How did you, how did you get started with blogs and blogging? Great. Well, hi, everyone. Uh, as Pia said, I'm Nyasha. I'm joining you all from Harare, Zimbabwe, uh, and it's a pleasure to be with you all. Um, so that's a great question. When did I start blogging? Uh, I think I started blogging in about 2012. Um, and one of the things I remember distinctly was being asked to blog on um, on a topic that apparently I knew something about. I think it was a topic around communication. And I remember feeling very nervous. This was about 2012 and not really knowing who I was blogging to and what I was blogging for uh, and feeling a little bit of trepidation as to how to sound smart and how to sound like I knew things in a limited number of words um, and just getting myself really anxious. Uh, but over the years, um, I really found blogging to become a tool that I use to express opinions 
uh, in a way that uh, allows you to have personality, but also expertise, uh, which sometimes is missing from our landscape, that ability to, to showcase your expertise. So I think that's the short story of when I started blogging. Um, yeah, let me know if that answers your question or you want a bit more. Yes, and, and you said you were really nervous and, and that, but then how did you get across that? Maybe that would be my first follow-up question on that. So I think, you know, practice really does help people to get better at things. But I'm also a believer that you must consume what you wish to produce. So also reading other people's blogs, engaging in those kinds of conversations can help you to assess what makes a good blog and what doesn't. And what I mean by that is usually when we read a story as an, a consumer, just every day when we read, um, you know, a newspaper story, an article in a magazine, an online post, we're very good at discerning if a story was clear, if it was simple, and if it made sense to us. And I think it's the same when it comes to something like blogging, is just looking around and saying, what kinds of things have I found interesting? What kinds of ways of exploring ideas have resonated with me? And also in that, to try and figure out what your voice is. So I can be a bit goofy. Um, I can be a bit... Uh, funny to myself. I think I'm hilarious. Not everyone shares that uh, opinion, but I can be all those things. And so in finding my voice for blogging was to find what is that balance between what I know and who I am? Where do I locate that authentic voice that allows me um, to, to blog in a way that might resonate with readers? But at this point, I'd also like to point out, I mostly blog for other organizations uh, and on behalf of other people. So the real trick has been to understand what is the tone and voice and identity of that organization and what is it that they want to communicate to the world and what are their opinions about the world um, that they can't always share in more formal settings how do we bring those out in a way that engage allows people to engage in content and also to ask meaningful questions that's great so yeah really about finding finding the voice that's and and the way to to express that. Um, I saw, uh, before we go to the next question, I've got a couple of other things that I would like to, to ask you as a follow-up. Uh, I would encourage, I saw that there was a, a participant with the with hand raised. Uh, so please, if you, uh, if you have any question, log them in the chat uh, and we'll, we'll make sure we take them. We'll have, we'll have a bit of Q&A, maybe in between, maybe at the end. So, but let's please log the questions in the chat that you've got for Nyasha or comments. Thanks, uh, uh, Leila, for uh, for uh, kicking us off on that, uh, starting us off on that. Um, all right, again, coming back to you, Nyasha, you said uh, you're blogging for others, but I know that you've been also doing loads of trainings uh, on communication in general and social media and writing blogs for uh, with different type of uh, organizations and individuals and practitioners, researchers. Uh, are there some common challenges that you have seen? I mean, you mentioned already a personal challenge that you had faced, uh, like the, the fear of writing, the fear of exposing yourself, right? But uh, what other common challenges have you encountered in your, uh, in your career, in your journey into uh, uh, training others on blogging? <laughs> I think I could spend the whole day on this well, one, no, but we don't I will have that try time, and be huh? <laughs> concise, like a good blog. I'll try and be short and concise. Um, the five, so let's put it, sorry, let's put it in the blog format. Maybe let's do the five challenges, right? Okay, that would be the title, challenges. right? Or right. the three, so up to you. I think yeah. that one of the things that really comes across is people sometimes have a lack of clarity of the topic they actually want to address in the blog. So, you know, you start in one place and end up in a completely different place. Uh, and the two places, unfortunately, are not related. So just being very aware of what is it that you want this blog to cover uh, and trying to stick to one one narrative or one story. Um, that's the language I like to use because stories are something we can really relate with. So what is the story that my blog is telling? The other thing um, I think is that when we say blogs are a place for opinion, sometimes people think that we mean this is now time for a stream of consciousness writing, where you just let everything that pops into your head land on the paper. 
Um, and while that has a benefit in other places, it's not really very useful for a blog. In a blog, you want to convey a point in a somewhat condensed format. It's not going to be long. It's not supposed to be a thesis. It's supposed to be short and quick, but conveying a, an idea quite concretely. So it's really important that when you write your blog, you don't just put all your thoughts down and walk away or publish it, but really put your thoughts down and then try and see how they're linking. Uh, try and see if they make sense together. Try and see if they're as clear as they can be. Try and make things short and pithy, right? So that people can see the points that you're making. Um, the other thing is that people write without an audience in mind. And I know that's counterintuitive because you say, well, my blog is my blog. Yes, um, that's fine. But I think the real thing is, who would you like to be reading this blog, right? So think about what you want them to take away. What's that audience? That can keep you grounded in a way so that you're speaking in a language that's unified. You're speaking in a way that you hope this particular type of reader will understand and you're giving them information they'll get excited or be interested in. And I think the last thing is really a little bit about formatting issues, right? A, a blog is not really um, an, a, a thesis, neither is it like an essay. It's a specific way of writing where we want to put short visual information. So make sure our eyes are leading readers to places, make sure that people can find interesting bits in your blog. Um, so those are some of my quick tips. I think I gave five. I hope they were five. Those who count uh, I, I, I counted four, but maybe I may, <laughs> might have missed one because I was also taking notes. And as you know, I cannot do two things at the time. Uh, and and I, I like because you, 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 I mean, you talked about the challenges that you have encountered and then you provided also the, the tips, the tips around that. Uh, uh, so you talk about the layout and structure, the way to presenting. Uh, but what about, uh, uh, can you maybe uh, tell us a bit more around the developing of the story, right? So that's, I think, was your first tip. You said, uh, you know, lack of clarity in the topic. Yeah? And then you started to talk about developing the story. Can we, can we, can you unpack that a bit more for, for me or for sure. us? So, you know, any story really, you know, since we were starting to learn how to write stories, I, I remember being in English class, being told that a story has a beginning, a middle and an end. Uh, and throughout life, that's pretty much served me very well to remember that everything I write should have a clear beginning, a clear middle and an end. And so <laughs> in stories, um, <laughs> we do... Hang on a second. Let, there are some microphone off. Yeah, great, please. Thank great. you, so Francesca. In a storytelling context, we don't start in the middle of the story most of the time, right? We, we don't start uh, when the action is happening. We start with a little bit of scene setting, a little bit of framing of issues. And so in a good blog, you want to do the same thing. You want to frame your opinions and ideas within an existing context. You want to give a little bit of other evidence or information that helps your reader understand. You want to pull out whatever the key issues are. Uh, so you want to, to, to walk your reader through some of those key issues. And then you want to get to a conclusion, right? So what? So what that the world uh, is the way it is? So what that um, forests are being degraded? So what, right? Why, why is this something important, right? And, you know, if there are any solutions as you're doing in, in your blog series right now, what are those solutions and what will they mean for us? So just being very clear about that storytelling format. And I think it ties back to the point that I was making earlier about layout, right? In that, in your story, make sure that, you know, each sentence you use has a, a meaning, right? Let's not write for the sake of writing, but write something and make one point in each sentence, making sure your paragraphs are nice and short. Because when we read online, the bigger the text, the less likely we are to engage with it. So just looking at those blocks, if possible, include some links to other information. That's one of the great things about blogging is this ability to link ideas. So 
if you're not going to spend too much time on something, but you want your reader who might be curious as to how these things are interrelated or linked, or maybe some other work that you've done, you can provide links within the body of your blog to help people go find that information, to help people get that extra uh, info. You also want to highlight anything that is um, important in your blog. So anything you want to bold it or maybe use um, an italicized font, but something to allow the reader's eye to fall at that key piece of information. We also want to use varying sizes of text so that, you know, the eye is able to play around the screen. And something that um, I've noticed in just a few blogs that I haven't, I've gone through, um, and I don't know if this is because of the format of your current blogs, but images are also a great thing to include in, in blogs, right? Don't be afraid if you're describing a forest as it was in your community uh, 10 years ago versus what it is now. That image can also bring that blog to life. So don't be afraid to use images in a way that helps to support or bring to life some of the content that you have on the page. So that's all part of that storytelling to draw your reader through a really coherent narrative of what it is you're saying the problem is or what it is this opinion is and what it is you hope to be done or why this is important. That's that's terrific. Um, yeah, I, again, I'm I'm always relearning, uh, talking talking to you. So it's uh, it's great to to hear all this. Um, I would like to pause a second here and see if there is any question. For I've got one more question that I would like to ask you. But first, maybe let's take a minute or, or two to see if there is any question from our participant. Uh, if anybody would like to uh, write uh, in the chat or to raise your hand. Uh, please do so. We've got, uh, I mean, again, we're very lucky to have Nyasha with us today. So let's make sure we can, we take the most out of her today. Um, we've got a comment from Victoria. Um, I just think that that way the earlier the post is sent and published. Okay, so I think that's that's a conversation around uh, the, 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 the competition itself and the logistic. We'll address that, but uh, I, I'd like to encourage you to see to to take the floor to take the chat box uh, um, and ask Nyasha anything. Um, Please talk to me. I love talking to people. I talk to Pierre all the time. So if you do have a question, <laughs> no, I'd love to hear from We you. don't talk enough. We don't talk enough. I guess. Uh, I see one hand raised from uh, Vikaspal. Hello, Vikaspal. Would you like to come in? Yeah, yeah. Do you have a yes. question for Nyasha? Yeah, yeah, I have also chat there. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 please go ahead. Hello. Okay, okay. As I'm uh, a faculty member uh, here in India uh, for a student, a student of BSc Forestry and MSc Forestry courses. And meanwhile, I have also uh, joined for uh, a mentor program under this uh, World Forestry Congress, right? So my question uh, from Nayasa is that simple as uh, can I make uh, some blogs with my students regarding to forestry related awareness or something related other issues? Okay, uh, so that's interesting. You could really make a blog about anything. You know, I've read blogs about people following their cats. I've read blogs of, with two points of view where two people come together and write together. So I think it's a great idea if you have students and you want to explore certain thematic areas to start a blog. Um, I think what I would suggest is probably to be very clear what type of forestry issues you want to cover and maybe have some guidelines for how your students can engage in the blogging process. Uh, maybe begin also with just a little bit of training. There's lots of online resources that are really good um, that you can just look at to help you to frame these blogs and to figure out where these blogs are going. Um, something I haven't mentioned, but that's just come to mind as you're speaking is um, blogs are like, you know, they live on and they, and they have this great way of building a reputation, building um, someone's uh, image. 
Uh, you know, and one of the things that is quite interesting is how people are using LinkedIn right now as a platform for blogging. So that's actually a really great idea if you get your students to express some of those ideas uh, and, and um, finding platforms or ways where we can share multiple um, information. So instead of just posting a blog on one platform, you can offer it to other platforms. There are lots of platforms that sh uh, host multiple blogs, etc. So it's about looking for what fits uh, for your objectives, as well as who you think that potential audience will be. I hope that answers your question. Okay, fine. Thank you. Nasa. So uh, there is a particular so, link for that uh, type of creating the blogs means from your site. Let, let me stop. Let, let me uh, stop. Uh, let me interject because, Paul, sorry, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll try we'll, in the follow up email. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll share some resources. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we'll uh, yeah we'll make sure that you get also some some res some online resources. Thank you, Vikas. Thank Paul. you very much. Thank you. Let's move to Riyad. Second in line. Uh, yes, my question is um, basically as uh, she mentioned that uh, she started blogging in 2012, and I feel like blogging is so much more in two the 2010s, and now we're in the 2020s, and everything is being taken by. TikTok and live streams and people are like blogs are not as popular as they were before. So how are, are you kind of fighting this? Or how, how do you think that blogs are still relevant right now in 2022 when everybody can just watch a live stream or watch a TikTok video? Oh, that's a great uh, Ria, question. Ria, inter <laughs> interesting because that would have been my, my final question to Nyasha. So yeah, please go ahead, Nyasha. I think that's a really good question. And it goes back to some of the fundamentals of why we communicate. So I'll ask you this question, um, right? So all the TikToks and Snapchats and uh, tweets we see, how many of them can you really find very easily um, when the topic is no longer trending? Um, how many of them do you go back to or use uh, in a way that might be more substantive? So in this world, as we look at it now, everything is so fast and so much information that we tend to lose a little bit of the nuance that comes. And the reason why we have the issue of someone will say something in 240 characters and we all are aghast is because sometimes we, we lose that nuance. So in this world, there's definitely the place for people who want a little bit more information, for people who are seeking more information. So I, I'm maybe old school still. When I go on Twitter, I love it. I love all the short information. I love how quick it is. But when I need to verify things, I actually go and look for places where there's much more information. Uh, I go to accounts where people maybe tweet really great things, but I also want to see what other things they've written. I engage a bit more with their content so that I know if I can trust them. So remember earlier we spoke about this idea of blogs being a place where you can build trust, you can build a reputation, you can build a body of knowledge. And all those things are still as important um, as our CV or our, our resume in this day and age, right? Where we share we share short clips about ourselves. We project who we are, but when people want to see a little bit more, there's a place where they can check that consistency of thought. And another thing is when we are doing content like social media, sometimes one of the things social media is for is to lead people back to places they can get more information. So you can take those same messages from your blog and then condense them into smaller, easier, bite-sized things for social media. But you have somewhere for people to engage a bit more with that uh, complex content. The other thing that I want to talk about is platforms like Facebook, ETC, their algorithms really do mess with the type of information that people are able to see. And what blogging does allow you to do, especially if you use keywords properly, is that um, it kind of can help you overcome that algorithm trap. When people search for things, those opinions, those types of uh, posts do tend to come up quite highly uh, if you've used uh, proper keywords. So it is a good it's a good other thing to have. Communication should be multifaceted. It should be multi-channeled. Uh, and it just allows you really to just build that credibility, especially for some of you who are young researchers or those who are looking to be opinion setters in certain ways. 
that's a place we can go and verify um, that thinking. And also we can link it to the broader social media stuff that you're using. I hope that answers you, Rihad. Yes, that was really good. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Niash, and thank you, Riyadh. Uh, Nicola, I see that you've got your hand raised. I would encourage everybody to write the questions in the chat, so let's not wait just to have the floor, so we can take more. And if we don't have time to answer them all, we'll make sure that uh, uh, we can follow up afterwards. I saw that Landry before has raised his hand, so Landry, please, if you have a question, write it in the chat. And then we've got also one in the chat from uh, Falguni. But Nicola first. Okay, thank you, uh, Pierre. Um, um, yeah, I want to ask you how you, um, in your base, in, in your experience, how how you manage address um, hard themes like uh, discriminations against um, women, sexual minorities, or indigenous people in in blogging. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. That's a really good question. I hope I do it justice. I think with blogging, as with all things, right, we have to exercise um, some emotional intelligence, um, our ability to assess what is necessary to say, what, what evidence do we have to say what we say, and also to use language that is respectful and language that is engaging. Um, so for most people's purposes, right, you want to share your opinions in a way in which it allows others to connect um, and also to, to set where issues are a bit difficult. You might want to also set what context within which you're speaking to allow people to understand a little bit of some of the nuance. So I, I'll give an example to maybe help you understand. You know, if I was writing a blog to advocate for um, uh, LBGT rights in Zimbabwe, it's an issue of law right? So it's an illegal issue. We don't really discuss it. Uh, and that's where it sits. So in my blog, I may couch my blog within the global context and within why it's important for us to look at other examples outside of Zimbabwe to find ways in which we can meet each other. And maybe I'll bring in evidence from other places showing how um, in countries where there is an openness to these rights, uh, people are more fulfilled, there's less hate crimes, ETC. So it's about trying to ensure that you're always looking at these complex issues within a, a specific context and being very aware that some language can be excluding. So just making sure that you're mindful of that as you write. And also ask other people to review your blog before you post it. Um, ask others around you to read through it and say, does this, did I do this issue justice? Did I maybe by mistake become discriminatory in my na in, in nature? Did I look at the nuance of this topic well enough? And like I said, remember linking to other things, right? Where we have limited space, ensuring that we've linked to other resources that may be useful to people. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Asha. Landry, briefly, you have a question. You've been with your hand up and then you disconnected. Would you like to come in quickly? Because we need to move on to the uh, next segment. So you're muted, Landry, if you'd like to unmute and ask a question. Short one, huh? Okay, sure, sure, sure. Thank you, thank you. Greeting to everyone. I hope everyone understands. I hope you're hearing me, okay? Okay. Uh, I'd like to ask um, Nyasha, can I, had, can I write a blog with the abstract of my research thesis? Is it possible? Because lately, Actually, I'm a work time for a design engineer. So I defended my memory on December 10th. Then I was asking myself if it was possible to use the abstract of my memory to make a blog with. Because lately I forwarded it to Dr. Ken, to Dr. Dr. Yeah, Dr. Mr. Ken, and he edited it and published it. Also, the Youth Climate Action website, they edited it and very soon they will publish my communication. So that's my question. I hope you understand me. Okay, I'm gonna try and answer. And if I don't answer correctly, you can just clarify quickly, Pierre. If you give me one second, I'll be fast. 
So the simple answer is no. You shouldn't publish your abstract as it is as a blog. You're going to have to work at making it a blog, right? An abstract is written in a particular way for a particular audience and with particular um, kind of outcomes in mind. It's very academic, can be quite dry. So what you want to do is take that abstract and find your voice. Remember, we spoke about what's your voice in that, what's your opinion, what your abstract is introducing your research. So you can take your blog and really look at how you can introduce some of the key themes that you discuss in your research and why these research pieces are important. So that's what I would advise for your blog. Taking the abstract and posting it and saying this is a blog isn't enough. <laughs> Remember, you want a different, you know, it's another audience you want to engage them in a different way. And we want to hear your voice. A lot of the time in research, we don't hear the researcher's voice. We hear the voice of science and the voice of, of, of what is correct and, and the empirical evidence and the knowledge. We want to hear a little bit about what Landry thinks and why Landry has approached things in this way and what some of the key things Landry has learned doing the research are. And then you can link your research to your blog to allow people who want to engage with the research in detail to be able to go and look at your research in detail. I hope that answers the question. Sure, thank you very much. I'm satisfied. Thank, thank you, you, Nyasha. Thanks, everybody. Um, uh, I, I, this could go on and on, but we really need to move. So big, big uh, uh, clapping for you, Nyasha. Thanks very much for being with us today. I see that there are a couple more questions in the chat. We'll pick them up uh, and uh, we'll follow up later uh, with everybody. Thanks very much again for being here with us today. Thanks for having me and all the best, everybody. Thank you, Nyasha. Thanks a lot. Uh, let me just share my screen again. And uh, we are way beyond time. So uh, I'm just going to whiz through the next uh, uh, two slides. There are more announcements. And uh, this uh, is going to be very quick. But don't worry. After this webinar, you will receive all this information in your email. So. There are opportunities to participate in an online digital training uh, on the uh, digital and social media lab. Uh, end of the month, uh, there is an application that has been published the other day. You'll receive all the details in the chat and in the follow-up email. Um, we'll also have uh, uh, an, an on-site training uh, before workshop before the Congress, 30 April and 1st of May. We'll communicate, uh, and there is going to be a call also for that. So if any of you is already traveling to Korea, there might be some financial supports available. All details will be published uh, in due time, and you'll receive them. Um, I mentioned before, we're putting together a social reporting team um, online and on-site. So it would be great to have you all as part of the team. And last but not least, the way going forward, uh, we're, gonna, we're setting up an online group to keep in touch, communicate, plan, organize, and get uh, and 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 uh, um, uh, take actions on social media engagement and outreach. Um, I had more details, but uh, we need really to move on because we are massively behind time. So uh, all information around these upcoming opportunities will be shared with you after the webinar. All links will be in your mailbox. Um, I'm going to get ending over to uh, Amos and Delina for our next uh, um, segment, which is a chat show with Youth Stories of Change. Amos, Alina, the floor is yours. Um, thank you very much, Pierre Andrea, and thank you so much, Nyasha, for taking us through that um, session about the blog competition and how to um, write a blog that appeals to the readers. Um, dear colleagues, we are now moving to another very interesting as well as very inspiring um, section of this webinar. And uh, today with us, we have um, two very inspiring young leaders who are inspiring um, transformative change in their communities through their actions and, and in their forest ecosystems. Um, but before I move forward, before we move forward to bring them on board, um, we have, I have with me here today co-moderating this session, Alina, um, who was uh, with us also during the previous um, um, youth webinar. Alina is a communications and outreach specialist at the Food and Agriculture Organization and a member of um, the, the, the World Food Forum. Um, Alina will have um, time to talk more about her shortly. I will also then move ahead to quickly introduce um, 
the people that are on our panel. Um, I just need to change that there. Yeah, um, today we have together with us here very two, two very inspiring youth. Um, one is um, Otuo Achampong Boache, uh, who is the founder of Eco Warriors Movement. And he is also the winner, a winner, the winner of um, the World Forestry Congress um, Forest Change Maker Competition. Um, he's going to tell us about his story. And I know that a lot of us have our inspiring stories in our own ways, but we might pick a leaf from these stories that are going to be shared with us. And then we have Sambat Ranabat, who is um, um, from Nepal, also here together with us today. He's a youth champion for nature and forest and also a member of the Forest Communicators Network. Um, yes, if we have, uh, we have them here already, I'll request them to um, un unmute their videos, turn on their videos, please, um, as you join us. I maybe cannot see that. Yeah, we have somebody there. We, do we have Otuo here? Great, yes, um, carrying forward, um, we will, um, yeah, I'm inviting you now, um, Sambat, as we, I don't see Otuo. I don't know, I can't see my screen properly. Can you, Pierre Andrea, do you see Otuo? Uh, I see, I see him. Uh, Otuo, can you, unmute, can you unmute and uh, um, start your video, please, so we can spotlight you as well. Paging for Otu, Otu, I see you are in the way in the room, but maybe we get started and then we'll bring him in. Uh, yes, you are unmuted now. If you start your video, we can also spotlight you. Thank you, thank you very much, Otu. Um, yeah, we there you go. Yeah. Um. To to go ahead. Um. We have a very quick question. Um. For our, they will tell us more about themselves. Um, we have a very quick question for um, Sanbat and uh, Otuo. Um, can you please tell us about, um, tell us how you are making a difference on the ground for both the forest ecosystems and the communities that you work in? We know that you work um, within forest ecosystems and, and, and also with communities. Um, I will give it over to Sanbat first. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Amos. Uh, hello and namaste. Uh, I am uh, Sambas Ranavad and I am joining from Nepal and uh, it's very great to be here with you all and thank you for uh, inviting me and uh, participating me as a guest in this program. I am uh, very much glad to be here with you guys and uh, addressing toward your question Amos, uh, uh, the difference uh, basically uh, I am uh, working at an agriculture uh, graduate officer in a uh, Ekishi uh, agriculture knowledge center uh, which is a government organization in Nepal. And this organization basically um, focuses on agriculture, forest, agriculture, uh, agri-ecology, and other different kinds of aspects that are related to the nature and society also. And uh, uh, describing about my uh, experience on making a difference on this society uh, using the community and using the various kinds of the information, the um, activity or different kinds of awareness programs that we are conducting uh, in the ground root level is mainly focused on balanced use of the forest and agriculture in a similar way. As we know that whenever we talk about agriculture and the forest ecosystem, these two are competing with each other. For instance, if we want to expand agriculture land, then it directly impact the forest area. And similar kinds of result is seen in case of water shade, water resource, and other natural aspects. So expansion in the agriculture land should be done in a very sustainable and very managed way so that it will not have any kinds of impact on the other natural resource. And the, regarding about various kinds of work that I have conducted and I'm conducting our we are creating various kinds of conference, seminar and awareness program. We are teaching the local people how to use forest resource efficiently and in a sustainable manner so that both the ecosystem will go on by on. And similarly, 
other programs that we are related are for, for example we are tagging the forest so that various kinds of indigenous or local trees or the forest biodiversity that are preserved in our country will be sustained and will be uh, remain longer in the coming days and uh, similarly other kinds of work that we are also uh, participating are we are uh, educating people on how they can fulfill their basic needs uh, from the forest resource as you know that nepal has very rural and different uh, uh, people who having a very low living standard and uh, many people are also uh, totally dependent on the forest ecosystem and this uh, dependence is creating a kind of pressure uh, for the conservation of the forest too so uh, these are the various kinds of the work that uh, my, me and my community are working on. I hope this addresses your question, Amos. Thank you, thank you very much, Sambat. Um, it's very interesting to know that you are working at the interface between agriculture and forestry, two different um, domains that are always seem to be competing against each other. But it's, it's very interesting there to know that you are able to pull in awareness to, 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 to actually demonstrate and show to the people that the two sectors can coexist together. I, I will just yeah. quickly put that um, question um, to Otto as well. Um, then I will um, um, give over to Alina. Um, um, Otto, would you also please tell us how you are making a difference on the ground for both uh, forest ecosystems and the community that you work with? Oops. We're I not hearing you, Otuo. I cannot hear Otuo. I cannot hear you. Can you? Your microphone seems to be connected. But we cannot hear you. We could hear you before when you came in at the very beginning of the meeting. Uh, have you changed your setup? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, perfect. It's better now. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So, um, Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity given me for me to also share the little we are doing here um, concerning forestry sustainability. Um, I must say that um, the Eco Warriors movement is a movement of young people um, that work towards environmental sustainability. And then our, most of our projects are pivoted on the five piece of sustainable development. So we look at people, we look at the planet, we look at peace, we look at prosperity, then we look at partnership. So these are the pivotal um, <coughs> points of our projects. So one of our projects, and um, that is the reason why I'm here today, is the Climate Smart Tree Planting Project. That is where we are trying to help our community address the three most important challenges of environmental sustainability. So according to the United Nations, biodiversity loss, climate change, and pollution are three important environmental challenges. And so personally, I'm a professional environmental scientist, a research scientist. And so I've been looking at how I can relate science to society. So how can I relate my ideas, my knowledge in science? And um, for first degree, I did something in um, biological sciences and then I specialized in microbiology. Then I did a second degree in environmental sciences. And so I'm looking at how I'll be able to help society with my knowledge in science yet ensuring that the environment is sustained for posterity. That is where we came up with this project in the community. And it's, it stems from my basic motivation. So growing up as a child, I live in a semi-hot urban community, what is currently referred to as a peri-urban community. And so we had a lot of trees around and the trees provided habitat for birds and for that matter, agora organisms. And so when I was a kid, the sounds of the bed, the melodious sounds of the bed at dawn was a natural alarm that woke me up and other children in my community. And so we didn't struggle to set an alarm clock. The birds will sing at dawn. And as they sing, the rhymes woke us up to prepare for school. I enjoyed this during my childhood days. But now what do we see in the community? What do I see in my community? Development and urbanization is resulting in deforestation and is creating a somewhat problem of pollution in my community. And so as a scientist, how will I be able to address this? Um, I was looking at the basic science so that I can communicate with the community to understand and also agree with the project and own the project so that we can together push the project forward. So basically, we all know that green plants through the process of photosynthesis are able to absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and refresh ambient air with oxygen. This is a simple scientific process.
process, everybody in my community knows because it's not their primary and basic schools. So I use this as a basis for my project. So that when we plant trees, the trees will give us oxygen, which we need. This oxygen will refresh the ambient air. And then they will take in the carbon dioxide, which we don't want. And so as they are doing that, they are also sequestering carbon from the atmosphere. And by that means, I am addressing SDG 13, that is climate action through mitigation, tree planting. Moreover, um, you know, from the beginning of time, when human population moved from the nomadic life to living in settlements, waste generation became a problem. And so in my community, one of the greatest problems is waste management. And so we have refuse dams and public toilets. These, sometimes before you get to these areas, the stench that grease you is enough to take that, don't come. And so we are facing a problem of air pollution as well. Because the refuse dams, then the public toilets, are providing what we call odorous compounds in science, basic science, odorous compounds. And these compounds pollute the ambient environment. And so if we can plant trees in this environment, then the trees are known to absorb these odorous compounds like sulfur dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and some other volatile organic compounds which the trees would absorb. And so it means that we'll be able to also help with the problem of pollution. Then, you know, there's the leaves of plants serve as settlers for particulate matter, that is dust. And if you live in Ghana, from where I live, if you are in Ghana, you appreciate that our roads are very dusty. And so it ends up polluting the air with dust particles. And so the leaves of the plant will serve as dust settlers, such that the dust particles will settle on the leaves, also cleansing and then promoting air quality of the community. Lastly, the beds. That's when I was a kid, they used to sing for me to wake up. We are losing them because of the fact that we are cutting down trees. And so if you're able to plant trees, then these trees will serve as habitat for these birds who have ordinarily lost their habitat and therefore are, being, are going extinct. They come back to the community. Then children, like my children and that of other children, would also be able to enjoy the melodious sounds of the birds as I enjoyed when I was a kid. So the climate smart tree planting is trying to use a scientific means to bridge the gap between society and then sustainability. So basically, this is what we do. So we plant local indigenous tree species. Then we also plant fruit trees, such as mangoes, purples, and coconuts. So it also helps kids because when I was a kid, we used to go around picking mangoes. Nobody asked that because mangoes were all around. And in my university, for instance, we had a road that we call the mango road because that road was demarcated. The boundaries of the road was demarcated by the mangoes. So we could walk to these areas, eat mangoes free of charge. Balance our diet with that. Magnificence from mangoes were very important uh, nutrients we needed to balance our diet when we were kids. This, nowadays, we can't see So this is what we see to bring back to the climate smart. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Otuo, for that detailed insight into how you are creating um, a change, um, a transformation in your community and forest ecosystems. Three very important things that I learn alongside, other, alongside others is how you are transform, tra transforming your eco-nostalgia into action on ground. That's a very important thing. We all have a memory of how good the environment was back in the days, and we, have, we, we bear a responsibility to to bring that environment to reality. The second thing is how you are finding a cut between forestry and, and, and the sustainable development goals. Um, that's something that is worth noting. And then the third very important thing is um, the fact that you are using science also, science-based knowledge to transform the communities. I know that many of us that are here today have, have, have had the privilege to study in schools, in good universities, institutions of higher learning, and to have some background in science. We got this earlier on in the chat, what people are interested in, what they study or what they do. And we all bear a responsibility. And I hope that we have some kind of inspiration from the talk that Otuo has given us to, to put our science, our knowledge, science-based knowledge that we have learned into action in the communities. Also being mindful not to despise traditional or indigenous knowledge. Um, thank you very much. I will now um, hand you over to Alina, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Alina. As you have seen, I'm a communications and outreach specialist working in the forestry department at the Food and Agriculture Organization 
of the United Nations. And besides that, I'm also part of the World Food Forum, a youth platform that combines a lot of youth initiatives from all around the world, trying to advocate for the transformation of our agri-food systems and forests are very important. And I would like to pull my chapeau, as you're saying, also to the organizers and the whole team, Pierre, Amos, Francesca, Rayani, everyone who's behind this organizing these youth dialogues. This is my second one that I can attend. And what I really like is that they are inviting young people where you can basically exchange your experiences because this also creates more credibility if you can exchange with your own kind and your equals. And having said that, I mean, uh, Ochu and Samba, both of you are change makers in your communities. In a very short sentence, less than one minute, can you tell us what are, let's say, the key challenges that you were encountering and what are the lessons learned and how have you overcome these challenges um, implementing your projects in your communities? I would pass the floor to Samba. Thank you, Elena. Uh, I hope I will complete it in a time frame. Uh, talking about the various challenges that we are facing while working in the conservation field, are, our working field is very huge. When you talk about forest, it is interconnected to agriculture, it is interconnected to soil, and it is interconnected to everything. So, uh, taking everyone and balancing each and every sector is very difficult uh, in, in terms of the conservation system. And you have to find that keeping balance between everything so that uh, you will uh, help every each and every sector to be growing and talking about the second challenges is that uh, the, while uh, conducting any conservation activity it is very difficult uh, to work according to the governmental plan and policy is i have already seen a, a question in the chat box that uh, uh, sorry it was not a question it was a statement that uh, angela mills also told that development developing ready project in amazon is uh, killing the forest and similarly here in nepal there are various kinds of developmental work that work uh, directly affect the forest and uh, other natural resources and um, unmanaged infrastructure, rapid uh, urbanization, and similar kinds of activity have greatly expensed the use of the forest system. And talking about the uh, third challenges is that it is very difficult to find the similar mindset and similar objective community people in our sector. Since we are uh, moving uh, toward uh, working in the field of the conservation and we should have a community or we should have a group to work together. In Nepali, there is a saying, it says that Ek thuki suki, soy thuki nadi. Uh, of course, you will not understand that. I will paraphrase it. What it tells is whenever a single person is clapping, then it gives a minor sound. But when 100 people are clapping together at once, then it will be a massive sound. Many people will hear that. So a kind of collaboration is always necessary in our field, and uh, which is a kind of very poor and weak uh, here in Trump of Nepal too. And um, other outcome, uh, other challenges are in uh, my country, in Nepal, most of the uh, indigenous group of people are very much connected to the forest resource for their basic needs. And whenever we approach that community and we tell them that not to exploit the forest as you are doing, then uh, there is no any kinds of alternatives for them. Since uh, very uh, difficult geographical reason and very poor education system, they are compiled to exploit or use the forest in a greater way. And due to the lack of this alternative uh, solution for them, they are uh, creating a huge pressure in the forest. These are some of the few challenges. And talking about how we can overcome uh, them uh, basically uh, proper planning and proper management of the people and similarly uh, gaining a, a kind of balance between the each and every natural ecosystem sector and making a great plan and implementing it properly help uh, for the conservation as well as sustaining the life of the people and i would not like to take much time i will just pass you <laughs> Thank you very much. And please feel free also to compliment yourself in the chat if you would like to add something. And I don't want to comment too much, but I think you said something very important. So uh, the challenges are to make people understand the importance of forests and to protect them. So I think also advocating for more forestry education would be nice. Then you said one major obstacle was also to bring youth to the table and to have a say in policy discussions. 
And I think a very a key word is also education. So thank you very, mu very much for sharing your insights from the ground. Very interesting. And moving uh, to a tour to a very different landscape uh, to Ghana. So the same question to you. What are the, let's say, obstacles and difficulties why you started implementing your program how did you overcome them and what are your lessons learned? Learned, I just remind you just in one minute, please. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> yes, in one minute. So I'm going to do this in one minute. I think the major problem or the challenge, I don't call it a problem because I <laughs> think um, challenges are meant to overcome. And so the major challenge we faced with this particular project was project communication. How to be able to communicate the project to the community for them to understand the essence of the project. You know, I'm a scientist. You know, in science, how we relate and communicate is different from what is done in the ordinary uh, language. So I remember the first experience I had, I went to a community trying to explain to them how the whole process of carbon sequestration, how trees can sequester carbon through their stems. And at the end of the day, I met about 50 people, none of them could understand. And so they didn't even really understand the reason why they should plant the trees. But later when I changed the communication style to come to their level, where and now I was using what they know. So I started communicating to them with what they know. So we start from the known to the unknown. So when I started from the known, using photosynthesis, they cannot appreciate the fact why they need trees in the environment. People began to appreciate the project. So I think in the initial stages of, our, uh, of this project, project communication was a problem and how people can rethink and then or learn to learn. You know, communities, mm -hmm. local communities already have their perceptions about um, such um, such activities like tree planting. So how people can learn to relay also another challenge in the field. We didn't understand why they should plant trees because from time to memorial, um, trees have always been in the environment for them. They've been cutting the trees down and then they'll be using whatever they want. But now we want them to plant trees. So why why would they stop? Why would they plant a cash crop? Why would they plant a, a crop? At the end of the day, they can get a financial gain from, but why should they plant trees? And so that's that that was also one of the challenges mm -hmm. people on learning to relay and then the communication of the project. Thank you very much. No, thanks to you. Um while you're speaking, could you just stay a little bit closer to the microphone so we can hear you better? Maybe for the next question, okay? Thanks. You were saying something very important. You were throwing in also the word communications. And I'm very passionate about communications and also um, the World Forestry Congress team is launching video competition, blog competitions. So maybe could you tell us what role has communication in your project and why communication is so important, especially to reach young people? And what means of communication are you using? Ochoa, maybe you can directly address yes. the question. <laughs> Thank you very much. I want to do this in one minute. I hope my voice is clear and then um, I can be heard loud and clear. Is yes, my voice very okay? well. Good. Okay, so <laughs> communication, like you said. So I had to change the approach. In this particular project, we started with storytelling. So yes. started with the story, storytelling sessions. Like I said with you, my childhood days. So I have a story I have entitled when I was a child. And this we do with short videos. Uh, WhatsApp is now a common platform and social media has helped us to advance communication. And people would pre prefer to watch short videos, which will not um, increase with lower bandwidth um, for having we say data. So something within the, between 10 and then 15 megabytes, even students can download and then can appreciate. So the strategy was, first, we did a need analysis in the community. No, I'm a scientist, so mostly I have to go with the empirical analysis before I can do. So first we started with a need analysis. Then we started with focus group discussion where we could appreciate how they would, the people can understand and then the language they want us to even go into. And that led to another project where we were trying to translate climate information to local languages. That's another project altogether we are also doing as Eco Warriors. It all came up from this project. So communication, what we are doing now is we are using the WhatsApp, group, uh, WhatsApp platform, we are using social media. In fact, we are using Facebook very well. And so we do storytelling. In the storytelling sessions, we sit down with students. We go to community schools, sit down with them, we tell them stories. We record in short videos. That is within um, two to three minutes. We try to reduce it to about 10 to 15 megabytes. We share it on our WhatsApp platforms, we share it on our Facebook, and then kids are mm -hmm. everybody wants to download. And because it's short, people want to enjoy it. So that is the, strat the strategy we are using now to communicate. And it's doing wonderfully well. Thank you. 
Great, thank you very much. Um, and I agree. I mean, in my native language, there is a saying that despite having technical knowledge data, which are very important, technical expert, without communication, there won't be anything because you need to convey yeah. your knowledge to the to the audience. Exactly. Thank you very much. And Zambad, you are a blogger yourself. I've seen some of your YouTube videos. So you're using uh, videos as a tool to raise awareness and communicate. Would you like to tell us something about why using this mean and how does it work in your community? Uh, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very good question that you have asked. Uh, I will directly want to dive in into the question. Uh, as you know that uh, if we look the statistics of the world uh, social media, then we can know that half of the world is using social media. Around 4.5 billion people are using a social media. Then just think about it. A single content that you create and a single touch through which you posted the content in internet, then you can reach a half world within a single touch and a single content. That's the power of social media. Just think about that. If you wanna convey, if you wanna create any kinds of awareness among the people, then you couldn't find anything that is faster, that is convenient, that is efficient than that. And social media in nowadays are improving in various ways that we can target our audience, we can target the age group, we can target our masses. So it, it is a very essential tool. And the social media nowadays is mostly used in, in terms of entertainment and inter, in terms of comedy and other various kinds of this stuff. And if we could use social media for the conservation work, then it would be a very good platform to work for the everyone so basically uh, yeah you have already mentioned i am a youtuber too and uh, most of my video are in Nep nepali language because i want to reach toward the community or the people who are native in my country and most of the work uh, i have posted in my uh, videos are how the people can use agriculture how they can use the forest and other ecosystem together and uh, talking about the um, this communication and the social media tool, it is uh, both uh, difficult and easy also. Difficult in sense that you should know what you are talking about, you should know about your subject matter, and you should know whom you are targeting. And the communication is easy also because once you believe in yourself and once you know that your content is good and you are conveying a better message, then you can reach a whole lot of people later once. So it is both gain and loss situation. Thank you. Thanks to you, very well said. Um, thanks to both of you. And let me um, just wrap up. I'm so sorry that we didn't provide you with more time because I think you can tell much, much more and please feel free to share your story in the chat. And I'm also sure that our two panelists are like to be contacted by one of our audience members here. And let me just circle back um, to what um, Niasha was saying as well. Because obviously, when I was young, I was always very intimidated by uh, people and young people who did already something so remarkable. But basically, it's not about comparing yourself to these remarkable young people, but to be inspired. Because if we um, remember what Niasha was saying, she, were, she had to struggle with her anxiety. But along the way, you can also find your own voice and your own calling, let's say. And having said this, I would like to thank the team for inviting me. I would like to thank both of our panelists and the other guests for um, sharing your own stories, for sharing insights from the ground. Thank you very much and all the best. Back to you, Amos. Thank you very much, Alina, and thank you, Sambat and O'Toole for those um, very wonderful presentations and, and for inspiring us. And, I, and I'm, I'm hopeful that many of us leave this place very inspired to also find our own niche of having our own sphere of influence. Um, yes, um, as we come close to the end of this and we would have been hopeful that we would have a lot more inputs, um, also enough time, but time is unfortunately not our friend and we have to move forward. And we, um, I sincerely want to thank each one of you for having um, stayed back with us to this far. Um, we have, exhausted if I reflect right from the start of this call we did mention some of the objectives for this um, webinar and also you did highlight some of the expectations that you had but um, time is not our even though time is not our friend I can say that we have managed to exhaust a lot of the objectives that we had 
And one of them was actually to announce um, the, the winners of uh, the Forest Change Maker competition. We just had um, a very incredible input there from Otuo, um, who is uh, a winner, who is one of the three winners of the Forest Change Maker competition. I will now put the link to the rest of the winners in the chat box. Um, you can follow there and see all the winners there. And you can also lead, um, you can also check on the World Forestry Congress communication platforms. And I hope that when you see these um, stories and these narratives, these inspiring stories, you get inspired to also take your own step or keep moving forward. Um, thank you very much. And I will now handle you back to Pierre Andrea. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thanks, Amos. Uh, well, just to say that, uh, yeah, again, um, uh, deep appreciation for to our speakers, uh, Alina, for uh, being with us again to, to co facilitate and cause the chat show, and everybody that participated. I think Nyasha has left, uh, but yeah, um, I, I'll, um, I've already thanked her again for being with us. Again, just a call uh, to repeat, no, we're not to repeat ourselves, but there are a lot of opportunities to get involved in the countdown to the Congress. So please do get involved. Uh, we'll, the, and the First deadline is 20th of March for the blog competition. So we expect to read your blogs. Uh, we look forward, not to expect, we really look forward to read your blogs, to read your stories uh, and to hear your voice and your opinion um, and to, to, to be able to uh, continue this conversation um, through the blogging platform and the other channels that we've got in place. Uh, that's all. Apologies for running late and thanks very much for sticking around with us until now. Thanks, everybody. We'll see Thank you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. I mean, bye -bye. Before, before we all leave, um, maybe we could just quickly turn on our cameras and, and, and have a, yeah, that's, that's kind of a tradition now. <laughs> very good. Thanks, Amos, for reminding that. <laughs> yeah, camera on. Yeah, yeah. Please, also our interpreters, eh? everybody, camera on. We want to see all faces that are around uh, the Zoom page, the, the, the Zoom screen, on the Zoom screen. Good to see you, Leila. All right, Amos, are you good? Yeah, smile, everybody. No, thank you so much. <laughs> thank thanks, you so much. thanks, Catherine. <laughs> thank you, Nicola. Thanks, Maria Paula. Ritika. Bye, thanks, everyone. everybody. Ciao. Thanks, Alina. Bye, everyone.